Good morning. How is everyone? How is everyone? Good. Good. I'm still full from Thursday. Okay. So we started a few months ago, actually. I wish I could preach more often, but a few months ago we started on the book of John. And we began from chapter 1. In verse 1. And we went through the first five verses of the chapter. And we learned that Jesus is God. He's very close to God because he was with him in the beginning. And that through him, all things exist. And without him, nothing would exist. He was the life and the light for all people. In the four verses following the first five, we learn about a witness named John. Not the same John that most people think wrote the book of John, but a different John that the audience of the letter might have confused for the light of the world. But the author makes it clear that there's only one true light of the world, and that is Jesus Christ. Through the four verses that follow that, we learn that Jesus was in the world, but nobody knew him. Not only that, but he came to his own people and they didn't recognize him. And we shouldn't confuse him and blame the Jews. It's not his own people. The Jews didn't know him. He came to his own creation and we didn't know him. But those that knew him and received him and believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. We were adopted in his family, and we should never forget this feeling that we had because people are going to be on different paths of the journey, and we need to help them at wherever they're at. And now we reach today, this morning, we reach the last five verses of John 1, which are the last five verses of the introduction. After this, it's going to start talking about something else, but today we're going to finish the introduction of John. We're also going to see today how Jesus is compared to the law. And also, for the first time in the book of John, we're going to actually get Jesus' name. Up until that, he was only known as the Word, or the true light. So why don't we get out our Bibles, or our phones, and let's turn to John 1, verse 14. I'll read them in English, and then we can also read them in Armenian. There's no reason we can't read the Word of God more than once. 
Verse 14, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. One of the most common arguments against Christianity at the time was that Jesus did not come in flesh. It's called docetism. He, it, he appeared to come in flesh. It looked like Jesus was human, but he really wasn't. He was God. He made himself look like that so that he can do all the things that he wanted to do. But then, at the same time, because he's God, he wasn't affected by the same stuff we were affected by. But the author makes it very clear. He came as flesh. The word became flesh. Remember that philosophical understanding of the word. It was. It was. The, this understanding of the word. It was theoretical. It was philosophical. Metaphysical. It wasn't something you can grasp. You could touch it. But according to John, it became something you can touch. What you can only think about before, you can actually experience it now in Jesus Christ. The Greek word for become could be used in, this, in several different ways, one of which is to be either created or to be, bor uh, to be born. Now, obviously, there's issues if we start to think that Jesus was created. This sermon won't be talking about that, but if you were interested in talking about that, it is actually an interesting conversation. Jesus was not created, he was born. He took on every aspect of being a human, including conception and delivery. Amen. Christians tend to forget the importance of Christ's birth, which is good. We're in the Christmas season. It's amazing. I, I, if, it felt like I finished putting my last bite into my mouth, and I look at the TV, and the first thing I see is Christmas. Christmas I mean, I know I was happening before. I heard the Christmas songs on the radio before, but but for some reason it clicked differently this time. I finished my food. I looked at my plate. I was done. I looked up, and there's Christmas trees, and there's a wreath, and there's uh, and it's green and red everywhere, and it, uh, we're done with Thanksgiving. It's Christmas time. <laughs> Thanksgiving It's understandable that we prioritize Jesus' death a lot of times. Because yes, sacrifice was necessary because we were sinners. We needed sacrifice to be able to bring us back to God. But without the sacrifice being human flesh and understanding what we go through, the death would have meant nothing. It was only because one was flesh and lived among us that then his crucifixion and his resurrection 
means something to us today. That garevor aider vor kani vor ais anse vor khachvetsa bharutyun arav marmin arazer skispe mezibes abrazer adigaevor guzenkishel. I'm in a profession that requires empathy to be successful. Korzis mek masse aidevor haskenale haskutsogutyun unenale timatsinin hanteb I know I've only been doing it for two months, but I still consider myself a psychologist right now. I'm not a, I'm not a good one, but I'm one, so I'm training, I'm learning. But empathy is required because without me understanding the way my client looks at the world around him or her, I'll never be able to help them. Haskenale, Manavan Timatsinin, Vijaga, Skatsum Nere, Iper Pajish Ador Lale, Shat Garevore, or Timatsine, In Ashari Mech, Gabrin, Speskori. Without me going into their mind and trying to figure out when something happens, this is the way they react, I will fail every time. Arans, Gernalu, Timatsinin, Matkin Mech, Matneano, or Nere Kidnal, Inch, Kese, Inch, Pes Gabri, yet the Adon Chehaskenam. And, 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 and the funny thing is, is that God does the exact same thing for us. You can think of the quotations in the Bible, but he experienced the world the way you and I experienced the world, but then showed us how we're supposed to live according our God is empathetic. He wants to experience the world the way we did. And that's why we believe Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. The other thing also is that this was not plan B. It wasn't as if the entire Old Testament happened and, oh, well, that failed, that didn't work, so time to go to plan B. It was always God's intention to come down as Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is about him creating the community that was supposed to receive him. We'll talk about the law a little bit more later. Go back to your Bibles. Verse 15. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. Okay, we'll talk about this more next time I preach. Because that's when we'll talk about the witnesses of Jesus Christ. But I want to make one thing clear about this verse. It's a quotation. It's been read before. It's been said before. Guess where? Huh? Church? No, not church. Old Testament? Not in the Old Testament. Okay. So we commonly would think, we'll go back and we're like, oh, it's in the Bible, so it has to be in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. It's a quotation. It must be in the Old Testament. But that doesn't seem to be the case. We can't find this verse anywhere. So this adds to that idea I gave you last time, one month ago, that it's possible that this group of people receiving this, this letter, this book of John, they've been talking, they know what they've been talking about. It's been mentioned there. So the closest one was yeah, when you said church. Yeah, that church had been talking about it before. So 
So like I said, we'll talk about that next time. Okay, verse 16. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. I don't know if you noticed, but I skipped an important section in verse 14. I didn't read it. It said, Jesus is full of grace and truth. Very similarly, this sometimes gets overlooked. Or worse, it gets described too simply. It wasn't that Jesus was coming and he had tons of grace to give out to everyone. It wasn't that Jesus was only speaking truth. He was the actual manifestation of those things. What the author is trying to get across is that Jesus was grace to its fullest. Jesus was truth. To its fullest. You were, when you saw Jesus, you were reminded of the grace and truth God had because He is God. You when you saw Jesus, you would see what God would be like as a human. We talk about this more in verse 18. But it's from this grace, it's from this fullness that we receive grace upon grace. More grace than you know what to do with. More grace than you can handle. More grace than we deserve. Which is technically the definition of grace anyways. Okay, verse 17. I think this is where I'll get a little more fun. At least it does for me, but I'm a nerd. <laughs> verse 17. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You English Armenian speakers, did you notice anything different between our translations? Didn't plan this. I knew it was going to happen. I'm like a magician. Okay. I'm going to try it again. See what happens. Can you tell the difference between the two? The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. What word do I not say that he says? It's pites. But. Now, I'm not doing this on purpose. I promise you. I'm reading it the way the Greek translation is written. But, but people feel really uncomfortable about the law. So what they did, what we did, what we humans did, when we came to this verse and John said, the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, they're like, that, that, that doesn't feel right, let's throw in a but to say that it's in contradiction with each other. And this isn't only the Armenian. It happens in English. It happens in every language. The, the, the people, Christians feel uncomfortable about the law and Jesus Christ's grace and truth being on the same level. But the reason for this is very important because the author is trying to 
provide to us sources. But Jared has in Chuk Kervazi as best Garevore, Kanevor Herinaga Mezi, Achbure, Gachan Tunel. Here's the problem. So, a lot of people that really believe that the law, uh, well, here, let me start from here. On one end, you have people that think that because Jesus came, the law is no longer for us. That's fine and all, but the problem is, majority of the Bible is the law. So now what you're saying is, well, I don't need majority of the Bible. I'm only going to focus on the stuff that I like. So then the problem is that you're saying, I don't want to listen to this part of the Bible. So that's wrong. That doesn't work. The law is necessary. It's in the Bible for a reason. But now, now you have the other side. There's people that say, no, we need the law. We need to follow it. We need to obey it, right? The Ten Commandments. We need to obey this stuff. The, the problem with these people is that they pick and choose which laws are for them and which ones are not for them. Yeah. They say Ten Commandments, great, I'll follow those. Really easy to follow. It's a bunch of verses. I just read them. But then the rest of the law, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, oh, I can't do that. That's not, that's not for me. I'm going to skip that part. So that's not for me. I'm going to skip that part. For them, I introduced them to my, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's in Deuteronomy. I know that it's in the Bible. Chapter 22, verse 11 through 12. Here's what it says. You shall not wear clothes made of wool and linen woven together. You Ku shall make tassels on the four corners of the cloak with which you cover yourself. So I just have a simple question for them. These people that say the, these people that say the law is important, I obey the law. I ask them if they wear polyester. polyester Now polyester doesn't grow on trees. It doesn't grow from the ground. If there's no animal that we skin, and out comes polyester. It is a mixture of materials. Something the Old Testament law prohibits. And if some of you say, no, I have a wool suit or wool jacket or something, and, and it's 100% wool, it says on the... On the on the tag, 100% wool. That's all I wear. I just wear 100% non-polyester. Yet the anon kalvor gesen che imes a purtesh imvaze hairur percent polyester ador met chiga. I point out something very simple. If you have a wool jacket or a shirt or skirt, I'm sure it has buttons. Kahasne mirens agesen boyeve pam mavor hakazes vestaim vran gojak neruni. And I'm sure those buttons are threaded with linen. Now, understand, I'm just joking. It's just, it's just supposed to bring up something that's, that we're taking out of context. These rules were given to construct a society. That society has not ended. The kingdom of God continues now. But the rules don't apply to us the same way they did 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Those, 
those rules teach us the type of uh, about the type of God that we worship. Այդ օրենքները մեզի գսորվեցնեին ինչպիսի աստված մնևոր կբաշտեն։ Even when you read the difference between I'll just leave it something very simple. Read the difference between the 10 commandments in Exodus and in Deuteronomy. Հին գտագարանի մեջ եթե երկու դեղերը որ դասնապանյանը կա ելիցը եւ երկրորդ օրինացը անոր դարբերությունը եթե նա ինք you're going to see a transition of the examples given in both places because the community itself even between Exodus and Deuteronomy changed so much հոն նույնիսկ կտեսնենք քանի որ ժողովուրդը կփոխվեր գործ ելիցեն մինչև երկրորդ օրինացը օրինակները որ կդրվին արդեն փոխված you can imagine how different even just one or two generations makes the law how thousands of years makes the law now for us we're not supposed to follow them to the t we're an idea an understanding that we get so that we can live the way god wants us to live ուրեմն գտեսնեք ինչ կարևորություն կա եթե մեկ կամ երկու սերունդի մեջ օրինակները փաստադրելու համար օրենքին ողջապ փոխվեցան վրան թիր 2000 տարի 3000 տարի եւ գտեսնեք թե ինչպես փարացի գերբով առնելով չէ որ օրենքը պիտի հետևի So there's no room for buts Ուրեմն այդ փայցը որ գտրվի պետք չէ ըլլա There's no need պետք չի գա The law came through Moses Օրենքով եկավ Մովսեսով օրենքը եկավ In fulfillment to that law grace and truth came through Եվ անոր լեցունությունը ճշմարտություն եւ շնորհքը եղավ We talked about this a few Fridays ago so if you missed it you missed it good but uh, we talked about how the law keeps you in grace and truth ինչպես տեսանք որ օրենքը մեզ գբահե շնորքի եւ ճշմարտության մեջ grace and truth get you into relationship with god but law keeps you in obedience with god շնորքը այո եւ ճշմարտությունը աստծո հետ հարաբերության մեջ է օրենքն ալ մեզ գտնե աստծո շիտակ ճամփաներուն հնազանդելով անոր մեջ okay let's go to verse 18 18-րդ համարը շարունակենք We're almost done. Գրեթեք գվերջանանք. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only son who is close to the father's heart who has made him known. Մեկը երբեք զաստված դեսա չէ։ Բայց միաձին որդին որ հորը ծոցն է, անիկա պատմեց։ When we see Jesus Եվ Հիսուս գտեսնենք We see the grace and truth of God գտեսնենք աստուծո ճշմարտությունը եւ շնորհը Because Jesus is God քանի որ Հիսուս աստված է So we see God Ուրեմն մենք աստված գտեսնենք Kind of Սևովմա այդպես կփածադրեմ I'll explain a little bit more Փածադրենք The God mentioned before Աստ... The God nobody has ever seen Jesus is making him known Աստված որը սկիսը հիշվեցա որ մեկը չէ դեսած Հիսուս զինք կներկայացնե So maybe you uh, Bible readers might say wait nobody has ever seen God before Անոնք որ սուրբի կգարթան գիտենք կարելի է ասես մեկ վարյան Ասկե առաջ ուրեմն մեկը չէ դեսած I'm sure I've read some stories where someone sees God Վստահ եմ որ դեղ մգարթացեր եմ հին գտագարանի մեջ որ մեկը աստված դեսած է I mean Jacob saw God and wrestled with him and then named the place Peniel Հագոբ եթե եդև երթանք դեսավ աստված անոր հետ մարդնչեցավ եւ այն դեղը գոչեց Փանիել It would say Moses would go in the tent and speak to God face to face Գսե Մովսես կմոդենար այդ խորանի մեջ կմտներ եւ աստծո հետ Tem artem gkhoser and Isaiah received his calling to be a prophet directly from God himself. Yesai markaren astuzme ir gochum antat arav astvats desnen. How did these people never see God in that case? Inchpes kernank sel vor mega astvats chedes. We'll talk about those and then we'll conclude. Asenk patsadrenk te inchpes yegavasi. So here's Genesis 32. Here's the verse that talks about when Jacob sees God. Yeres un yegrot zenantotsi Genesis 32 verse 30. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. Of ses kradzer vor desa Jacob Hagopa astvats desa tem artem yev dagavin Gabrim anor hamar ait degin anuna Paniel gochets. Now this one's kind of easy it depends if you agree with me. This comes after Jacob wrestles a man. Geser martum het gmardencher Hagopa, God, God is not a man. 
Աստված մարդ չէ, իրենք, կրնակ պացադրել և սել ուրեմ են անի աստված չեր, կանի մարդ է. Վիզիկական ներգայացում մներ աստուծո այդ կիշերվա մարդն չիլը հագոպի։ Հիսուս ալ չեր, կանի որ սուրպկիր կնորենք ես է Հիսուս ձնավ մի կանի հայոր դարի ետ կանգ է։ Ադի թուրին է պացադրելը։ Ելից։ 33 վերս 11։ 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 Ելից։ 33 վերս 11։
and ne never talks about there being scarring on Isaiah's face. So it's, it's clear that Isaiah was seeing a vision. I'm sure many of us have seen visions or even dreams that we see something and say, that is God. Does that mean we've seen God? No, we've seen what we think God is. Like. But with Jesus on earth, we get a representation of what God would be like if we actually saw him. Jesus is God also, but it's a little different because he was born and he lived a life and he's human. God is not human. Above that, as a pastor, as a person almost receiving his master's, I will gladly say, I have no idea what God looks like. But the Bible says in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Nobody knows what's going to happen after we die. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Amen. Eventually, we'll see God as he is. There's a clear distinction right now between what God and Jesus look like, but we're still reminded we know God through Jesus. Jesus lights up the darkness. Jesus gives grace and truth. Jesus is the word made into flesh. Jesus provides us with everything we need to know who God is. With this, we finish the introduction to John. You can tell that John was very, he was prioritizing, we know Jesus the way he knew Jesus. And I'll remind again that the purpose of John was that we would know who Jesus is, that he is God and Messiah, and that believing in him will give us everlasting life. There's, there's one last point I just want to throw out so that you can think about. Jesus never admits any of this. Jesus is he never says any of this. It's always proclaimed about him. It's almost as if his witnesses carry his identity. We can never say, oh look, here's some proof. Jesus says he is the son of God, that he is this, he is that, he is that. It is through our faith in God, in Him, that we provide His identity to people around us. May the, May the Word of God bless you all. Amen.